very good morning hope you are having a great day uh, congratulations your papers have submitted and uh, you're done with your english paper uh, so today what i'm going to do is i'm going to take you through the section 3 part of your writing skills paper uh, i'm sure you tried your best let's go over the sections one by one and we'll discuss in detail as to what was expected all right so uh, going to the first part question 4 where you had to attempt any one of the following i'm sure you had a lot of options so makes life easier for you and i'm sure you've had a lot of practice on each of those uh, the first one was uh, drafting a virtual message first thing first what is a virtual message a virtual message is something which enables you to uh, enables you to send and receive uh, messages over an internet without physically using a phone so to speak if we can put it simply and plainly so the question asked here was asked here was manisha is a graduate girl uh, and she misses her college bus her father has gone for his regular morning walk she needs his bike to appear for her entrance test you have to draft a virtual message in about 50 words that she would write to her father okay so um, obviously if it's a virtual message it could either be a sms message or it could be a email message so to speak so we'll just keep it simple let's assume it's a sms message so it will be from from manisha and it will be you'll have a date and then you will say hi dad i hope you're enjoying your morning walk i miss the college bus and have an entrance exam to take could i please use your bike i'll be careful it's important for me for my future thanks a ton love manisha okay so this is what is expected from you your short crisp uh, again it is going to be informal because it is a daughter writing to her father so obviously you don't have to have a subject line etc etc great right? okay fine so let's move to the next one which is the statement of purpose what is a statement of purpose let's begin with understanding what is a statement of purpose a statement of purpose is a document which is basically uh, you know marketing your skill sets etc for an admission to a reputed university uh, college either in india or abroad okay something which is very commonly used these days for people who are aspiring to go uh, you know to uh, very uh, well known renowned universities this is something which is definitely uh, important and i think that is the reason why the state uh, syllabus has included this okay so it gives you a practical hands on experience on how to write a statement of purpose so what is the purpose of writing this yes of course you're going to market yourself you're going to talk about what you want to study why you want to study why you are opting for this university why you choosing that course line um, you know what is your experience if you have any leadership uh, experience some community service experience or why 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 should they consider you you know they'll have thousands of application how do you stand out okay and uh, why do you think you are a great fit fit etc and you can also add your extracurricular activities so on and so forth now they've asked you for about 150 words that will be about roughly one one and a half page all right so uh, the solution to this would be you start with your name address you can put your contact details then you come to the date and you would address it to the uh, admission office university that you are applying to suppose you know let's take now we are in pune let's take you are applying to symbiosis and you want a degree in bachelor's in communication skills so you are applying to symbiosis college you can put the address pin code etc and obviously you need a subject line because it is very very important so application will be application for admission to the bachelor's uh, bachelor's uh communication skills program uh start with a greeting the greeting will be uh, respected sir madam i am writing to express my earnest desire to pursue a bachelor's degree in the communication skills uh program in your universe in your esteemed university i have recently completed my uh, you know hsc examination under the state board uh, you know and i am excited to channel my Uh, enthusiasm for an effective communication into formal education at your esteemed institution 
So that's your introduction, the first paragraph. Then you will go on to the main body as to why, what is your interest? You will say, my interest in this communication, you know, uh, degree program uh, is beyond uh, academic, academic realm. I am actively participating in debates, you know, public speaking forums, events, some out community outreach program. And I have honed my communication skills uh, because, uh, you know, it is my passion and I definitely want to make a positive impact through effective dialogues. And uh, your university holds a special place in my heart. And I want to, uh, you know, uh, I want to excel. And I think this is the university for me. I am eager to immerse myself in the diverse uh, knowledge and experiences that you provide at your university. And I'm sure it will cater to both my professional and personal development okay you can also end by saying you know that you're very confident that you know you will uh, thrive and uh, you will make uh, it work for you and you are very very uh, you know uh, you are very very pleased with the vibrant academic community at that particular college and uh, finally you may want to thank them uh, saying thank you for considering my application, which could be your last paragraph. And I look forward to the opportunity to contribute. Uh, and uh, I would like to hear from you soon and uh, follow my uh, dream or passion. Then you sign off saying sincerely your full name, etc., etc. cetera, Okay. So because it's 150 words and uh, they are expecting you uh, and it's about four, four marks, right? Each of them is four marks. So, you will have to make sure that it is crisp, concise. It caters to uh, what you want to do, why you want to do. Add. Uh, you can also go ahead and add about you know certain other community service outreach program. You can give details of those as well. But in all, it needs to be minimum you know uh, two to three paragraphs. It can be even more lucid and even more personal. The tone can be a little less uh, you know formal. That's absolutely okay. Yeah, so uh, that was the next one. Uh, of course, you had a lot of options. The next uh, question for you is a group discussion. Imagine your class has ex attended a guest lecture on career development. Write the group discussion in the form of a dialogue associated with this lecture among three to four participating students. Okay, so uh, because it's a group discussion, we know we usually have a moderator. So you can also add a moderator who is part of the community in the group discussion. So you may want to start with a basic opening uh, where you say uh, the moderator says, good afternoon, everyone. Or it could be the student himself opening. Good afternoon, everyone. Today we've gathered to discuss and share our uh, thoughts about the recent guest lecture that we've had on career development development let's start with a brief overview and uh, who would like to kick off kick off this discussion so that's the introduction so we're getting started with the discussion and then you'll have student one student two student three student four who each of uh, who will share his or her points based on the guest lecture that they have attended okay so uh, the first student can say hi i'm priya and um, one of the major takeaway for me from this a skill development, uh, you know, uh, lecture was that he, uh, you know, the speaker, Mr. So and so, highlighted uh, the aspect of both hard and soft skills to stay competitive in the job market. So that is her takeaway, and she's talking about, you know, that part. Student two uh, can talk about uh, something else. So let's say student two is say Priya, and she says, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, so student two could be another student. So she's actually responding to the first student, Priya, saying, absolutely right, Priya. I completely agree with you. The idea uh, also stood out. The same idea stood out to me as well. And uh, we need to be more adaptive and be more open to learning new things uh, throughout our professional journey. And uh, I, I like the idea of being a continuous learner or being a lifetime learner. You could add that. Uh, then the third, you know, student can pitch in and he, he or she would say, you know, hi, I am so-and-so, maybe Maya or uh, Nikhil or someone. Uh, you, 
that person could possibly say i am you know very intrigued by the you know lecture and uh, i loved the fact that the speaker spoke about building meaningful connections you know and uh, that can ho- open uh, doors to various opportunities that are available in the market and uh, he also spoke about the importance of networking and how important uh, that could you know lead to opening uh, uh, career paths and avenues for us in future okay and uh, then somebody can even sum up saying that great point everyone you know uh, i think skill development continue so you basically summing up so skill development continuous learning networking uh, these are some of the crucial points which have come through through the guest lecture and uh, uh, i hope you know uh, we are able to uh, you know take our careers uh, uh, to greater heights and um, we uh, we we feel this particular lecture uh you know has given us the right direction and uh, let us uh, create a road map for ourselves and uh, take it forward something of that sort so you kind of sum up and you possibly you know then you can end your entire uh, discussion okay you can also add points of uh, clarification where you can you know maybe one student can say you know i'm curious to know uh you know i could not understand a particular point can someone help me understand that so that can also be a part of a group discussion so it's absolutely okay so the whole idea of this group discussion is to talk about what stayed with you at the end of the guest lecture which was on career development and there are four or five students who who are speaking about it all right so that was again four marks uh moving to uh the next one of course that was an email uh, again uh, something that we have done uh, with the students so the question here was you have to draft an email to the manager of a company to request him her to give you an opportunity as an apprentice to serve you as an experience for your career development very interesting so you're starting with a you know statement of purpose which is a bachelor's in communication then you go into a group discussion on career development and they've taken the same lead there's an email uh, uh, where you are actually applying for a position of a apprentice for a career development program now a uh, very important the formats uh, are something where you actually end up scoring so if you do, do the formats correctly you get your two points there and the content part you get two points so that's how they distribute the point of course while they when we talk about comp- content what is critical is also what you write how you write uh, whether the uh, you know the piece is logically organized okay uh, you know and of course the grammar structure and all of those things also are very very crucial otherwise your marks are taken away so coming to a draft email uh, let's go to the draft email so because it is an email we will have a from we'll have a to yeah. so you'll have a from colon from and you put an email address please make sure there is an email address okay so if you are drafting it to the manager of a company so you will say to the hr manager abc limited at gmail.com please do not please do not write uh, the address because this is again like i said it's an email it's not a letter okay so there will be a gmail address there could be a yahoo whatever you know read if address and to who are you so to to is uh, to the hr manager and from is from the party who is writing so it could be you so you can name yourself abc or xyz or whatever at gmail.com all right and then you will start with uh, the subject subject is very important because uh, it is a formal email because you are asking for an opportunity right so yes the subject line will be application for apprenticeship opportunity that could be and always keep the subject very short i always advise students to keep the subject to one line it should not run into two lines okay and that is what it should be uh moving on then comes the opening uh, where you start with a greeting respected uh, sir madam i hope this email finds you well or you can just directly start with your introduction my name is so and so and i am uh, you know a recent graduate from 
the maharashtra state board or from whatever board you want to say with a specialization in a particular stream stream you can put the name of the stream whether it is science arts commerce and i'm writing to express my interest uh, in obtaining an internship opportunity at your esteemed organization i am very sure my skills will contribute and for my skills will uh, contribute to the success of your uh, organization and then that's your introduction you introduced yourself what you are what you're doing etc etc now you're going to the second paragraph which is the main body and there you're going to talk about a little more details about what you have and what are your skill sets you have to market yourself right so you can say i have com- successfully completed my uh, 12th grade examination and i am uh, very eager to apply uh, to the theoretical knowledge that i've gained during my academic uh, journey and uh, i am now looking for some practical work uh, experience and uh, i am uh, very fascinated by the reputation and the uh you know dynamics and the innovative culture work culture that your uh, organization offers and it actually aligns with my career goals and aspirations and i am particularly drawn to your company and i really uh, want to excel uh, in the field and i believe that if i get an opportunity to work as an apprentice in your uh, organized esteemed organization it will provide me a Ex- an excellent uh, platform for professional growth and then you can end with saying that you know i'm very confident that my you know you talk about your qualities you know you talked about your skills and your passion you have to talk about your qualities you can say i'm a confident uh, uh, person and i have a strong work ethic and um, i think all the above make me the most suitable candidate for this position and uh, i am very uh, you know i am I'm waiting and i kindly request you to provide me this opportunity and uh, um, uh, some time to discuss and take this uh, further okay and uh, i can be reached on my uh, email numbers whatever you have given and yours sincerely and then you sign off and you sign off you can put a b c d x y z your contact information that is your uh, you know phone number and also end importantly end with your address it is very important to end with an address because if the person uh, wants to write back to you he will not have any address he will only have the email because you know you he, he can see that from email id id but what if he wants to send you a company brochure or some other thing and he wants to put it by post so you will have to provide your address in the end okay so that is another important thing on an email so like i said because it's a formal email you will have a from to that is your email id and then you will have the uh, subject line and then you have the greeting then you have the opening and then you have the main body and then the closure okay so uh, that was again for four marks moving further we are going to a report writing imagine your class attended a session on how to win conducted by an expert speaker write a report on the session especially the relevant points again in about 150 words so because there were so many all or our options i have a very strong feeling that students would have attempted the email because i think you know that that's something which you know, i have seen in class people and students find it more easy because they can relate to that okay so now when you're writing a report what happens when you're writing a report a report you will always open the report with a title okay so the title will be report on this on how to win and then you will have a byline because who is writing the report somebody is writing the report so you can also have a byline or saying written by you know so and so person and then you have the date and then you start off you would start off there is no respected sir respected madam no greeting nothing you directly start off the report uh, so your report is actually a, a very non biased uh, information of what happened let's put it very simply it's a report you're not going to add your uh, emotions into a report you are just going to talk about what happened so that in future if somebody wants to refer to this particular Uh, re- uh, information. They just look at the report. 
okay so the session on how to win uh, so you can start by saying the session was uh, conducted <clears throat> the session on how to win was conducted by an expert uh, speaker and you can name the speaker and it proved to be an insightful and motivating experience for a grade uh, 12 students uh the speaker mr so and so emphasized on several key points and aspects for achieving success and uh, how did he start so you can say firstly he started by defining clear goals and creating a well defined road map uh and he also highlighted the importance of being resilient and not giving up in the uh, face of adversity or setbacks okay and that was you can say that was a recurring theme that he highlighted that uh, we must view failures as a stepping stone to success and then you can uh, break into the next paragraph saying additionally you know he uh, also spoke about time management and prioritizing tasks how to maximize productivity etc he stressed on the significance of continuous learning improvement Uh, adapting to today's uh, dynamic world etc etc and he was also he also highlighted about having a positive uh, outlook mindset and uh, you know maintaining a healthy work life balance so we we need to know that this entire uh, uh, you know uh, what do you say report is about an expert speaker who is actually telling you how to win okay so that is that is something which is which you have to keep in your mind that is the overarching view so you can also say he provided us a lot of uh, valuable insights on dealing with stress and uh, you know sometimes uh, you know uh, it is also important to take one day at a time and not get overworked and bogged down by uh, you know challenges uh, you know change is good and change sometimes is not easy but we have to keep going you know so you can talk about that and he also gave uh, guidance on strategies which are required to navigate uh, towards our journey uh, 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 you know uh, navigate towards success so to speak all right so that can be again a brief report so we've done with report now uh, let's go to an interview so you heard you had three options either you could do an email uh, a report or an interview now interview is you something you know students uh, find interesting and exciting because i think that was also something which uh oops okay so interview uh you have to imagine that you have to conduct an interview of a famous actor we all love to uh, watch movies and i'm sure we all have our personal favorites so with the help of the format given below draft questions on the given field do not change the sequence of the questions this is something which i always tell students you know they get so carried away with the first two lines they do not read the remaining questions they have very categorically said that you are conducting an interview of a famous actor there is a format given to you so please use the format and they've also given you the sequence of the question easy all there i'm sure a lot of students may have attempted this okay so whoever was your hero shahrukh khan amir khan whoever you could have taken their interview now let's look up the format so they have actually given us a format name of the interviewee field repetition date venue time duration of the interview so this is going to be your format so it will be like this you know you can actually have all this here you can you know draw a line and the name of the interview you can write sharukh khan or whoever peel reputation you can say bollywood uh, you know uh, uh, reputed bollywood uh, personality celebrity actor okay you can also if you know of if you're writing about an actor who is uh, you know has an other other achievements you know he's uh, got a film fair etc ifa award whatever you can write that also okay that will be the repetition then comes the date when did you conduct this the date with the year month 
venue where it was conducted whether it was done in an auditorium whether it was done in the principal's office in a studio in a library and the time time as to from what time to what time and the total duration of the interview whether it was 45 minutes 15 minutes etc so you will have to give the details so you can actually put this entire thing into a grid you know draw a line put this into a grid so it looks very neat okay so you straight get your one point there and then moving to the questions okay so you can start with an opening the questions we do not interview someone directly like we don't start about a particular question we you will usually set up the mood so you'll or you could start with good morning you could start with good morning and uh, you know uh, we are uh, we are extremely pleased to have you on board today uh, during our cultural fest and uh, our students are very excited and looking forward to this interview uh, welcome to our uh, you know uh, college and uh, my name is so and so and i will be uh, have i have a few questions for you may may i proceed and then you can start off with the questions you know one two three they've given you eight you can actually have i'm sorry you can actually have uh, about uh, two questions for each of those topics that they've given you motivation initial preparation or you can have one that's absolutely okay uh, that is with you you can decide accordingly so like i said uh, first first your grid is done then coming to the opening the opening is done that you know welcoming someone uh, to your uh, college annual fest or cultural fest so the first question is on motivation so let's see what you want to ask you could possibly say uh, what inspired you to uh, you know pursue a career in acting uh, can you share a specific moment or a person that who actually motivated you to enter the film industry okay that could be a question on motivation or you could say uh, how do you stay motivated in uh, during your challenging times uh, in your career how, how do you keep yourself up and running uh, the second question uh, on initial preparation uh, so you could ask what were some of the initial steps that you took to prepare to you know make uh, a career in acting uh, did you go through any formal training uh, or a course uh, and you could also ask about some early experiences which actually shaped uh, the person uh, to acting the celebrity to taking up acting as a career uh support very easy you could ask about uh, who has been the you know biggest pillar of support in the acting career and um, how you could also ask about how important it is to have a support system in the entertainment industry you could ask that question uh you can also ask for uh, some uh, instances you can ask them to share a memorable instances wh where you know uh, support played a crucial Uh, role in you know building career building that person's career so to speak ideals uh, gurus teachers again simple question uh, you can also ask a direct question saying who are your role models and um, how have they influenced your acting career uh, you know what are some other valuable lessons uh, you know or insights that you have uh you have got from these uh you know mentors that you've had so that could be another question uh, then you could talk about the first break you know uh, uh describe the moment when you got your first break what was your reaction uh, what was the initial reaction etc then you can go to the next which is public response uh, how do you handle public response uh, both negative and positive and um, do you recall any particular instances from the past which significantly you know impacted your uh, career decision a response from public which actually impacted your uh, career decision so to speak okay uh, social media connection influence you could talk about that because that is also public response let's remember any anything which is floating in the domain is public response coming to recognition uh interesting question uh, what does recognition mean to you what happens when you do not get an award or uh, what was mo your most memorable uh, award uh, that you have received till date okay and uh, what according to ha you has the most lasting impact 
you know is it a award or is it uh, you know a critical acclaim by critics you know where they actually uh, you know uh, acknowledge your work your acting etc so you can uh, tweak the question the way you want that's absolutely okay uh, moving to the next question which is on goals and dreams uh, so you could talk about what are the current projects pet projects that the person is working about and uh, dream roles etc what the person aspires to be etc now what you done with the first eight questions in each question you could have had one or two sub parts which is fine now when you close you also have to have a logical end don't end with just goals dreams and end there just then say that you know thank you uh, for uh, you know your time and thank you for your patience and uh, i thoroughly enjoyed having this conversation with you i'm very sure uh the audience has also equally uh, you know enjoyed the you know discussion dialogue and uh, we wish you all the very best for your future endeavors thank you and you can sign off so that could bring the uh, interview to a logical end all right so that was about the interview uh, i think the interview was a very simple one because you know they gave you all the clues here so you didn't really have to rake your brains right uh next one we are going to speech now this is also something which is very simple now what you would have realized is the writing piece is so much writing to be done and what you are writing for is just four marks isn't that <laughs> something which is challenging i know a lot of students do not like too much of writing but yeah yeah so attempt any one of the following activities question c which is a speech imagine you are preparing for an elocution competition and you wish to speak on a topic green revolution draft a speech 150 words on the given topic now it's a speech so uh, becomes very easy i'm sure you have uh, seen watched heard people giving speeches so when you start you always start with a greeting you would say respected judges esteemed teachers and my fellow students you know my name is so and so and today i stand before you to shed some light on this very important topic which is green revolution and uh, it marks the transformation uh of revolutionizing food production uh, you know and uh, we were uh, you know we were uh, challenged with the task of feeding the world population and we champion this by actually you know uh, using the high yielding varieties if you can go back to that lesson call of the soil you know uh, so the from venkat ayer you can use some uh, some things from those lessons as well so high yielding variety crops modern techniques organic uh, farming advanced irrigation uh, and systems you could talk about that so and then what is green revolution it is not only about increasing crops but it also symbolizes our commitment to eradicating what hunger and poverty so green revolution is basically empowering uh, farmers and uh, it gives uh, food security it gives economic growth to the country you can talk about a lot of those things you can talk about sustainable farming practices you can talk about a future where everybody is you know uh, having a harmony health uh, environment uh, you know all of those things you can talk about okay so balancing progress uh, and ensuring that we have uh, abundance everybody has something to eat healthy food to eat okay moving to comparing uh, so again here uh, you have to imagine you're given a responsibility to compare a program by a college authorities you need to prepare your script on the program titled cultural fest 2024 you have to draft a script and decide the flow in the points given now they've already given you clues we've done one with the clue which was the uh, film personality interview so i i hope uh, the students have taken the clues seriously because you'll be get a uh, rekha bhai ji so uh, let's start by uh, so so you can uh, start the comparing again uh, you may want to start by introducing yourself so you say uh, you know 
good afternoon or good evening or good morning ladies and gentlemen respective faculties talented students uh, i am so and so and i take immense joy and pride standing here for the much anticipated event which is the cultural mm-hmm. but, sorry bhaiya 12 yahan pe ha bhaiya ye abhi thodi der mein ho jayega pata nahi kitni time dusra aur hai na हाँ लेकिन मेरे को जो सेक्शन बोला है मैं वो सेक्शन नहीं तक पढ़ाना है वो बात कर लो सर से मैं बाकी प्रिपेयर करके नहीं आया ना देखा है मैंने बात कर लो आप मैम से हाँ। देखती हूँ पहले इतना खत्म कर लो ये तो अभी ये जो बात हो रही है ये एडिट हो जाएगा नहीं <laughs> ओके ठीक है तो ओके सॉरी सॉरी अबाउट दैट so yes uh, we started with the greeting ladies and gentlemen respected faculties and talented students so very good evening to all of you and i take immense joy and pride uh, and we've gathered here for a much anticipated event which is the cultural fest of 2024 i am your host and those for the evening and i'm honored to be your compare uh, for this spectacular evening and then you know so they've said prayer so you can put prayers in the bracket so you can actually say you know let's start with a prayer and a sanskrit prayer and then you can put the first two lines of the prayer in the bracket so it's 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 understood that there was a prayer and then you could say let's begin this evening by um, on a very harmonious note and i invite so and so person maybe the principal or the head boy head girl whoever it is to lead us into a prayer and we seek blessings to uh, it, uh and we have the spirit of unity and celebration so let's get started then you can put it in bracket lighting of the lamp the lighting of the lamp is taken care of then you move to the introduction part so you can say to signify the entertainment Apne that bolo. cultural Sanjay. events brings brings to our lives i now request our esteemed uh, chief guest uh, and our college principal whoever that is you can give the name uh, to join us on stage to light the lamp and uh, you know as we bask in the glory of uh, you know this lighted lamp let me take a few minutes to introduce uh, the visionaries and influencers of this program who are present with us <coughs> without whose i'm sorry without whose support and encouragement <laughs> this uh, cultural fest wouldn't have been a reality okay so then that is done then the facilitation who are facilitation means who are you actually trying to honor okay so you will invite those uh, parties to stage then you could say i would like to invite uh, the authority name figure uh, you know and uh, your presence here is definitely uh, you know um, a true inspiration for all of us and then you go to the cultural fest program now here you will actually outline what the program is so for all of those you could have to do three lines and then you go to the cultural fest program this part and there you will talk about uh, let's get into the cultural fest and it's an incredible uh, talent that we have in our college and uh, we boast a lot about it and uh, we 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 have a you know mesmerizing dance performance some soul stirring music and some thought provoking plays and uh, you know lined up for you today it's going to be electrical vibrant and uh, i'm sure it will be a feast for your senses you could say that and then you could uh, you know uh, move to the chief guest speech of this chief guest uh and then you would say it's an honor to have you and we request you to share your knowledge with us your insights and your words we are eagerly waiting to hear and i'm sure it will motivate us and inspire us to do our best okay then uh, if you want to have a presidential address you call the college president principal asking them to deliver uh, uh, they are speech and enlighten you with uh, the vision uh, for the cultural development and academic growth of your institute 
and then you can uh, close with a prize distribution ceremony uh, you know where you are acknowledging talent and uh, you can ask the guest to join you on stage to you know distribute the prize and of course last but not the least will they ask you or not you have to have a vote of thanks a vote of thanks so before we conclude the program uh, we would like to express our gratitude to all the people who have made this fest a a success thank you for being such a wonderful audience and we will continue to flourish uh, uh, and uh, i'm sure uh, you've had a great evening good night and you would then logically end your uh, thing okay sounds very long but yeah we, we must remember that i'm doing everything i'm also doing the ones which are in option so you you wouldn't have attempted the whole paper so this is a little lengthy okay fair enough now we're moving to uh, we finished the interview with the actor we've done the speech comparing okay i'm sorry uh we are now moving to the yeah so we've attempted this part also we've done this we've done all of this this entire thing we have done now we are going to expansion of ideas so expansion of ideas uh you are given a proverb a saying and you are supposed to expand it with the help of the points the points are also given to you manners make the man okay so it's an old uh, proverb uh, bas- basically uh, it says that if you have a good character conduct it has an influence on your character so they are talking about essential virtues like politeness speech tone gesture action courteous amiability etc so you can integrate a lot of those and you can make your write up it can be simple lucid just straight points and i always tell students do not mince words when you are doing a writing mm-hmm. skill paper always write short sentences so that you can uh, you know save uh, your marks otherwise you'll end up making a lot of grammatical mistakes straight simple points uh, uh, simple language is absolutely okay no jargons absolutely okay uh, but make sure that your sentences convey the meaning in a simple form to the reader okay that is most important so that is what you need to do so you can talk about uh, qualities like politeness uh you know upbringing respect etc which is very very important and it en- encom- uh, encompasses a lot of uh, subtleties of speech tone gestures body language etc and a person's true character uh, always relieve really, uh, reveal not only through uh, how he expresses himself in words but also through non uh, verbal expressions you know how i smile how i conduct myself how i sit my attitude towards uh, you know a person you know which i express through my body language so uh, we have to be courteous and amiable and we should re- treat each other with kindness okay so being empathy uh, being empathetic understanding uh, to our uh, fellows uh, is something which also uh, you know leaves a very very indelible mark on uh, the world around us so you can say a lot of that and an individual's character is uh, you know uh, woven with a lot of things you know through his mannerism politeness his action words okay and uh, it influences and it also speaks volumes about us as a person so manners definitely make man okay so you can write this out i don't think this was too complicated and even if it had old english as make it i think the line itself was very simple to understand moving to the next part let's understand what's the lesson next part mm, you had to write a review a book review now uh, not to show how many of you would have attempted this i don't see too many people reading a book but i thought maybe you know uh, uh, if you had read the last uh, lesson which is actually a play from uh, sir arthur canan doyle which is uh, you know the character sherlock holmes so i thought uh, maybe we should do a quick 
uh, book review on Sherlock Holmes. They've already given you a guideline: title, front page, back page, language, feature, uh, pictures, quality, presentation, value, vision, and variety. So all of those need to be included uh, in the whole uh, book review. क्या था आपका ये पीटीए सॉरी पिछली बार मुझे बोला था आधे घंटे में खत्म कर दे इस बार बोल रहे हैं बारह घंटे okay so we are moving to the book review uh, and uh, the question reads you have recently read a famous book magazine write a review on the same with the help of the following points title front page back page language features content pictures quality presentation values vision variety okay that's a lot they have asked i'm sure you've experienced a book i don't know if you've read any uh, book in the recent past but yes if you have you know that every book has a title it has a front it has a back cover you have the synopsis at the back the front cover if it is appealing you want to buy a book otherwise you normally don't want to buy a book so all of those things uh, make the book uh, more interesting okay that's the appeal the visual appeal all right fine so uh, they've given you the guidelines so it becomes easy for us to uh, write but again you're writing a book review which means you are telling the audience that you've read the book and you want them to read the book too and what you liked about the book didn't like about the book or what what stayed with you basically but again keeping all those cues in mind do not divert your mind and do not uh, attempt anything else stick to the cues keep it short and crisp all right so uh, here i've just very broadly taken uh, the title as uh, sherlock holmes uh, and, uh, we are doing sir arthur canan doyle who is the author okay so the front page uh, okay so if you have to talk about the front page we'll say the front page of sherlock holmes exudes a classic and mysterious charms featuring an intriguing illustration of a famous detective himself uh you can say the title font is very captivating it's very bold it has got uh, you know a very uh, you know a 
you know it's got it's like a spell and you are spell bond okay and you can say that the london skyline adds to uh, some atmospheric uh, allure or excitement you know because you know that baker street is in london so mm-hmm. you can talk about that maybe you can you can tell them that uh, the cover page has the j um, baker's uh, you know street office sherlock holmes office there at baker street okay uh, the back page uh, back page provides a glimpse into the adventure that awaits uh the book there is a synopsis i told you what is a synopsis a synopsis is a very short description a uh, no, uh, short very short subtle uh, story and it is very inviting because when you read the synopsis you really want to know uh, what, uh, you know you really want to know what's going on in the book and that actually teases you it's a teaser it actually makes you buy the book so you can say the uh, synopsis invites readers uh, to the world of uh, suspense and mystery the plot is very intricate it has very captivating characters like typical uh, you know sherlock holmes stories would have a language they're talking about language now what is what kind of language does the story have you read the uh, lesson yourself right the last novel that you had in your textbook what kind of language is it it is eloquent there is a certain level of eloquence uh, it's very immersive uh, because when you are when you start reading after reading about a page page and a half you get hooked to the story so you can say it provides a very immersive uh, you know experience of uh, sherlock holmes investigation and the script is very rich because it's got a lot of narration let's understand it is a detective story if it is a detective story that means there are minute details which are captured and uh, that uh, is actually a visual Uh, imagery that you find form in your mind uh, okay and you can uh, say that it has a good mix a delightful mix of thrilling mysteries uh, crafts uh, to engage and to keep the reader captivated you don't want to drop the book till you read the content and you can talk about one or two characters in the story who have uh, you know had a lasting in- impression on you you can talk about those and uh, you can talk about the picture quality presentation uh, you can uh, say that the you know the language uh, is primarily very descriptive and the book has uh, a few illustrations i'm sure you've seen books which have illustrations in between it has uh, some caricature there is a comic strip or there is some sketch a particular uh, you know scene is uh, given uh, in, in a visual form so you can talk about those that that adds to more uh, you know uh, suspense to the particular uh, uh, book and uh, maybe it, uh, it you know it uh, creates a visual experience for the reader to understand what exactly is going on in the story you can talk about the quality of the paper uh, you can talk about the print that the print is uh, good uh, to read easy on the eye difficult on the eye okay uh, the thickness of the book you could say the presentation it is well laid out or is it difficult to read because you know you are kind of holding the book and you have to keep pushing to see what are the you know where is the script and all of that so you can talk a lot about that whether the reading experience was uh, uh, pleasant or not and uh, you can also uh, talk uh, of course they've given you about values visions and variety you know what about the value vision and variety uh so you can say that because it's a sherlock holmes story uh you know the, the value systems in the story are about being honest being truthful being on task on case uh, being very logical very interesting uh, because holmes uh, and because it's a detective story it will be a lot to do with logic reasoning justice being fair okay and not to be carried away emotionally like you know watson kind of got carried away because the the lady who actually came with the case uh, he found her very attractive right but did that happen to holmes no it didn't happen to holmes so he is very very he was very clear about what he wanted you know so he knew what he was expected to do as a detective and he was on task so you can talk about those things uh, that he believes in justice and nothing can deter him from his final uh, you know uh, goal 
and you can also talk about holmes visualization of each character his vision and his keen observation uh, about uh, you know uh, the minutest details uh, clues facts which keeps challenging the uh, audience or the readers uh, all the time and how uh, you know he get, go gets into the length and breadth of the story to understand and gather these facts and you know how quick uh, he is to you know join those dots and come to that conclusion okay so and that feeling of richness and freshness of the story imagine it's such an old story right sherlock holmes books if you read any story that you take you read you still can relate uh, to a lot of those characters you you still feel the thrill you still feel the suspense it's because it is still so fresh so that is a lot to do with the writing skill and there is so much of excitement thrown okay and then you can also conclude uh, so have a logical conclusion you can say that sherlock holmes stands as a literary gem and uh, he uses a lot of visuals uh, he uses a lot of uh, you know clues facts a uh, mystery uh, you know very intelligently in the story so that you know you uh, the book actually is a testimony of this timeless uh, you know appeal that it has to its audience and it is a crafty master uh, you know masterful storytelling by uh, sir cat canon uh, arthur sir arthur canon doyle yeah so you can talk a lot about that as well i've taken through Uh, i've taken you through this a little more in detail because i realized that students one they do not read books second they don't know what a book review is okay i'm sure you read a film review done a film review book review becomes very uh, difficult because you have to stick to what is given in the book and then you use your uh, connections and uh, talk about what you like or you don't like about them. all right <clears throat> okay then comes the blog uh blog writing <clears throat> what is a blog writing here they have asked you to write a blog in a pop- proper format on body language excuse me for my throat on body language with the help of the following points which are about 100 to 150 words uh you have to give the meaning a feature characteristic scope benefits importance use and ways to utilize so that is uh, the expectation now what do you understand by a blog what is a blog so a blog is a, a popular online online writing form right so you 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 just writing what you feel you're speaking your mind you're sharing your ideas opinions it's more like a personal experience uh, that you uh, share on a platform on a platform with a wider audience okay and who reads them people who have same interests okay so if you're writing a blog on food and if i'm a foodie i will read your blog if you're writing a blog on travel and if i'm someone who loves to travel i will read the blog so it is the same community of people who usually read the blog okay <laughs> so here they've asked you to write a blog on body language so this again is going to be very simple because you start with the meaning and features of body language the characteristics scope what is the benefit of having a good body language how to use your body language and things like that. all right so uh let's uh move to the next one the appeal okay appeal uh the question is prepare an appeal on the topic traffic rules for safety measures with the help of the following points they've given you ideas and what you need to remember about the appeal is appeal is something like a notice it's like a notice because it is going to a larger community of audience and you are actually getting their attention to a particular topic that you feel very close to or you want to talk about okay so it will have it will have slogans it will have pictures it will have uh, scripts you know some calligraphy because you want to make it very catchy and you want to uh, in in you know in a way uh, invite people to read that okay so uh, we are talking about an appeal the appeal is on traffic rules for safety measures uh, and we have to have all of those points the cues are given so we do not deviate from the cues okay so traffic rules 
you can start with traffic rules, your safety. So it can be, you know, in, in the form of a box, have a box. In the box, you can have lines in between. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, your appeal can be obey traffic rules for a safer tomorrow. And you can have a catchy slogan saying traffic rules, your safety, your tool. Okay. Or you can say anything that makes sense to you. Keep it short and catchy. Okay. Uh, you can say uh, in the hustle and bustle of our daily lives, it's easy to uh, overlook importance of adhering to traffic rules. Let's prioritize our safety on road. So that can be a catch line there. And you can have a message, you know, like clear message, right? Road should be a pathway of life and not an arena of perils or trouble. Okay. That could be on a message. And then you can say what we can do, you know, like a pointer, another uh, section or box there. You can say obey. Obeying uh, traffic is not just a legal obligation, but it is a commitment to our own safety and safety of our family. Okay. Uh, cultivate a culture of safety. Uh, a small effort is a significant step for a big change. You can say all of that. And then if you are going to have a road show or you're going to have a talk, then you say date, which date you are going to have uh, this particular uh, program on traffic rules for safety. Uh, what is going to be the time, duration? What is the venue? Where is it going to be held? Is Are you going to have a chief guest? Do you have someone, uh, some celebrity? Do you have some, uh, you know, traffic, uh, you know, uh, a person in the traffic, uh, you know, uh, someone who is a popular, uh, you know, a celebrity who is coming and going to talk about this or you're going to have a, you know, road show, etc. So you can uh, talk about that and then end with one more byliner saying that let's drive responsibly and contribute to a safer tomorrow for us and our families, you know, something like that. So basically, I, I repeat, a blog is nothing but a platform where you, uh, sorry, we are not talking about the blog. I'm sorry, we're talking about an appeal. Appeal is nothing but like a notice, a general notice where you are appealing, requesting people to, uh, you know, uh, be part of uh, the cause that you feel uh, connected to. Here, the cause is traffic rules. It will be with images, with catchy bylines, slogans, uh, talking, uh, crisp talk about what is required to be done. Uh, you know, people, what happens when people follow traffic rules. Okay, so uh, that was about the traffic. Uh, let's now uh, move to um, the grammar section. Let's move to the grammar section. That is question five, if I'm not mistaken. So we go to do as directed. Yeah. yeah, here it is. Okay. So they haven't asked you too much grammar. And I think it was very simple. Uh, do as directed. I'm going through this with you live right now. So the question number is A5, do as directed. The first question is, I like to ask questions of the places I visit. That's the question. And they're asking you to choose the correct tense uh, form of the above sentence from the following options and rewrite. Okay. So they are asking you to rewrite, which means you will write the sentence out and you will also tell the uh, your examiner which tense the sentences. I like to ask questions of the places I visit. Simple past, simple present, past perfect tense, and present perfect tense. Come on, what should it be? I like to ask questions of the places I visit. This is in the simple present tense. It is something that you do every time. You like to ask questions of the places that you visit. Okay, so there is no past tense of the verb, verb used. And uh, 
that also gives you a hint that it is in the simple present tense. So you have to write, I like to ask questions of the places I visit and then put option B. So you rewrite the sentence and you write the correct option. Yeah. So that is the first one. Very interesting that you get one mark for getting that right. One full mark comes to you. Okay. I would come back to my apartment in New York. Correct the following option using used to for the given sentence and rewrite. I would come back to my apartment in New York. And the options given to you is I used to come back to my apartment in New York. I have I have used to come back to my apartment in New York. I used to come back to my apartment in New York. I had used to come back to my apartment in New York. All right. So that is the second one. And uh, the answer is. Uh, so you have to choose the correct option using used to. So the option is C. I used to come back to my apartment in New York. Okay. It conveys the idea that the speaker had a habit of returning to his apartment in New York in the past. Okay. So that is why that should be the right answer. Question six. So I've not read the passage. I'm not doing the passage right now. So that's left. Going to be one language study. Do as directed. Okay, Avnish said, Sachit, what are you doing in the garden at this time? Identify and rewrite the correct indirect narration from the following option. So they've given you some options. Let's go to the options. Uh, Avnish asked Sachit what he was doing in the garden at that time. Avnish wanted to, to, wanted to know from Sachin his cause of being there in the garden, Avnish asked Sachin whether he was present in the garden at that time. Avnish asked Sachin whether he, whether he was doing in the garden at that time. Okay, let's go back to the question. The question is, do as directed. Basically, they've given you something in the direct, uh, direct uh, speech and you are supposed to make an indirect narration. So, what are such it? What are you doing in the garden at this time? So, how will you change it? Okay. So, what will be the answer? Avnish asked Sachit what he was doing in the garden at that time. That is the correct answer. Okay. What he was doing in the garden at that time, which is the indirect narration of that question. So going to the next one, Neeraj Chopra may not participate in the world championship due to ankle injury. Choose the correct option from the following sentences, which uses a more definite modal auxiliary. Most definite, okay, not indefinite. So Neeraj Chopra may not participate in the world championship due to ankle injury. The options are, Neera Chopra cannot participate in the World Championship due to ankle injury. Neera Chopra will not participate in the World Championship due to ankle injury. Neera Chopra should not participate in the World Championship due to ankle injury. Neera Chopra might not participate in the World Championship due to ankle injury. If you look at the fourth one, the fourth one is again a possibility. It is not definite. Okay. Uh, so what is the correct answer? The correct answer, if you want to keep it definite, you have to make it straight. So you will say, he will not participate in the world championship due to ankle injury. That is option two. Neera Chopra will not participate in the world championship due to ankle injury. Okay. Uh, the third one should not participate is your opinion. And the fourth one is a possibility. So we are looking at the definite mode. Next one. Unless you are confident, you will not succeed. Choose the correct option from the following options to change the sentence beginning with if. If you are confident, 
if you are confident you will get success if you have confidence you will get success if you are confident you will not get success if you are not confident you will get success so the third and the fourth actually just change the meaning so they are automatically out so when we do the elimination i think the third and the fourth are out if you are confident if you are confident you will get success so if you are confident you will get success uh, there is some issue with the grammar if you are confident you will get success would have been appropriate but this is if you are confident so i wouldn't want to buy that as an answer if you have confidence you will get success then would be the most appropriate because the others don't fit the bill okay so if you have confidence you will get success or if the sentence was if you are confident you will get success however we don't have that option so b that is two okay so that is the answer uh spot the error and rewrite the correct sentence he prescribe medicine along with a few exercises to his patients he prescribe medicine is that correct he prescribe medicine along with a few exercise to his patients so they are talking about a doctor obviously so what the what does a doctor do he prescribes medicines the doctor prescribes medicines that's a subject verb he prescribes medicine along with a few exercises so if it is few it is exercises few exercises to his patients so it is prescribes okay so that is the uh, that is the one here all right so with that we end uh, this part of the lecture so we did an analysis of the paper uh, according to me the paper was not very difficult if you had practiced enough you would have been able to uh, attempt uh, the grammar was very basic the nothing they did not ask you an active passive or they did not ask you anything which was very very difficult it was pretty simple and straight uh, like vanilla <laughs> is what i would say uh, of course writing skills uh, if you had uh, been through the format and if you had worked on specific skills i am sure uh, the part would have been really easy for you so again i think i must give you the benefit of doubt uh, assuming that you would have practiced enough and you done done that well okay uh, so uh, i think i have covered uh, the writing skills in detail uh, that was the idea and i have covered the grammar elements also uh, for the remaining part Uh, you will get a streaming again uh, thank you so much and i wish you well and all the best for your future uh, exams that you're going to take up and uh, do well you rock thank you from adci have a great day bye